Indiana wanted to travel. Had the numbers there, three on one. He made an easy score. And now the Zags by 13. Deflected out of bounds. Indiana maintains possession. Let's watch Fargo now at that. 12 points today. Indiana has stayed within striking distance, John. The problem is Gonzaga just, they just don't let you breathe. They don't, and uh, when Indiana's made their runs, Gonzaga's been put to answer, especially with some real three-point shots they've been able to hit. With John Laskowski, I'm Tom Hamilton. Glad you could join us from downtown Indianapolis. Fifth-ranked and unbeaten Gonzaga. They lead Indiana 60-51, to 320 to play. Matt Bolden. Tabor comes out. Indiana trying to get aggressive now in its half-court defense. Shot clock at 12. This is Pargo. Nice look to Bolden. Well, that's what experience does. Those two play so well together. Well, and, uh, you know, experienced teams, as you mentioned, Tom, they can score in a lot of different ways. That's the old backdoor cut. And Pargo saw it coming. Makes an easy basket out of it. They are fun to watch play, aren't they, Jack? They are. They hustle all the time. They uh, get, got behind a little bit in this game, but never let Indiana feel they could win the ball game. Pargo, he traveled, didn't he? Guess not. Bolden with the layup. Indiana wanted to travel. Had the numbers there at three on one. He made an easy score. And now the Zags by 13. Deflected out of bounds. Indiana maintains possession. Let's watch Pargo now at that last play. Before the before that, I'm sorry, here's the back cut. He sees Bolden right there and gets the nice bounce pass to him. Knows it was a bounce pass. Now here's the last play. The three on one. He didn't travel there, left his feet, faked left, went back to the right. That's what an experienced guard does. Jeremy Pargo out of Chicago. Illinois recruited him. That's the thing, too, about Gonzaga. We, we talk about them recruiting nationally. Oh, what a play by Austin Day. Deflected the inbounds, and as it was going out of bounds, he slapped it off the Hoosiers. Well, you get a 6'11 guy to play, uh, to guard the out of bounds guy, that's yeah. the kind of plays you can make. But not only does Gonzaga recruit nationally, but they're now beating out teams like UConn, Texas, Big Ten teams for various kids. And remember, it started with Dan Munson all the way back yep. there in the late 90s. Then he took the Minnesota job. And uh, Mark Few's been at Gonzaga since 1992 as an assistant, now in his 10th year as head coach. Well, when the Indiana job opened after Mike Davis left, his name was mentioned. Any big job that opens, Mark Few's name is mentioned, but he loves where he's at. And he has a contract till 2018. That'll help. That'll help you stay. Indiana with 145 left has the basketball down 13. Malik Story on the drive. Can't get it to go. Pritchard had a block but foul. Well, the thing, too, that's refreshing about a guy like Mark Few, I mean, he has seen that sometimes when you leave a very good job, in hindsight, you probably wished you hadn't, and he's very content right now in Spokane. He's proven this is no longer a mid-major program. John, they're, they're a Final Four contender. Absolutely. They do a lot of charity work. He and his wife back in the Spokane area, a big golf outing that's raised millions of dollars for uh, uh, cancer research. So you get set in your way and say, is the grass yeah. greener on the other side? Well, it's pretty good right here. And he's decided to stay at Gonzaga, and he's done a wonderful job. Well, and he said, now our program, we have our own charter plane, so they're not dealing with that kind of an issue when you're that far away from some of the places that they travel, like coming here. That's a reach-in foul from behind. That'll go against Brett Finkelmeyer, playing with that mask after breaking his nose. 64-52, Gonzaga, 136 left. Good look there, Tom Crean in his first year at Indiana. He maintains that we will never deal with a losing effort or losing habits. Well, he doesn't have to worry about that right now. Not the way this club plays. They're a little short on talent, but that'll change in the coming years. And he coaches and coaches without seeing the score or the time on the clock and keeps going at it, bringing guys in, bringing guys out, and the fans of Indiana have just fell in love with them already. Yep. 
and he's going to go to four and four now on the year and uh, lose to another top rated team but they love Tom Crean in the end. And it's not that Indiana doesn't have talent. I don't mean that John. It's just that when you've got nine freshmen hey, you're dealing with some staggering odds when you play that many young kids. Pargo into the front court. Neil worked the clock. Well he is a magician isn't he? Jeremy Pargo, he is just one of the, you can see why he's compared to Mateen Cleese. You didn't really get to see him if you hadn't seen uh, Pargo play in that first half. He, he did not do a lot of the things that he's capable of. This second half, he's had a much better uh, effort in controlling the ball just like that, not just offensively, but defensively. He can give uh, uh, another point guard fits the whole night. Jeremy Pargo with nine points today, and he does all the little things that don't always show up in the stat sheet. Well, today's advanced auto parts drive of the game is compliments of Austin Day. Takes that one. And now when you're 6'11", you don't have to. You can choose which side of the room you want to dump from. You know, <laughs> most guys say, uh, oh, I've got to go to the left side. When you're 6'11", you can do it right or left. He decided to go around, do it on the right side that time. So Gonzaga will stay unbeaten, ranked fifth in the country. They lead Indiana by 15 with just over a minute to play. Dumas penetrating and a reach-in foul on the Zags. Bonus time now for Indiana. It's one of those games, Tom, when both coaches are going to be pleased with their team. Not Mark Few in that first half, but they came back in the second half, did the yep. things they needed to do. They're not going to score 80 points, uh, but they got it out a tough win. And Tom Crean, you know, he's got a young team. These guys all playing high school ball last year, and you stay with the number yep. five team in the country as long as they did. That is a, a, a little bit of a reward, and uh, they're not going to win this ball game. But again, this team's matured another step. Good look there, Tom Pritchard will take a seat. Devin Dumas at the line with 13 points today. The thing that has really hurt Indiana today has again been the miscues. The turnovers yep. again, over 20. 25, and, and John, it really got them to start the second half and put them in that position where it was such an uphill climb. Most coaches will, will tell you 12 or 13 will be good, you know, six yeah. and a half. So that's 13 more possessions. And if you can score on half of those possessions, that's seven. Yep. That's 14, 15, 18 points. If you make some three-point shots, that you would have more than what you have. That's enough to win the ball game. That's enough to win this game today. Uh, Indiana didn't get those chances, those shots. Well, this copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Big Ten Conference may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference. Tom Crean, former assistant coach for Tom Izzo at Michigan State. Ahead to Jeremy Pargo. Oh, my. Yeah, we saw that in the shoot-around yesterday. <laughs> he had a one-on nobody. And he may be <laughs> six foot two, but he can hammer that ball down. Can Daniel Moore do the same? Not quite. And then Day got fouled. Watch Jeremy Pargo on a pogo stick. Well, that's the old uh, long bomb play. He saw nobody behind. Look at that, the windmill. That's the windmill dunk. Whoa, there it goes. Good look there, Jeremy Pargo, who has John mentioned went to the pre NBA draft camp then decided you know what I want to play my senior year at Gonzaga. Quentin Day makes the first our big day of hoops continues on the Big Ten Network. Next it's DePaul and Northwestern and Chicago rivals battle for bragging rights in Chicago right there. Evanston of course for the Northwestern. DePaul not very far away. Mark Few there with Jeremy Pargo, his leader has led Gonzaga to what will be their sixth win. And they still have to play Washington State, Arizona, Yukon, and another matchup with Tennessee. What a schedule. And he gets him ready for that tournament for sure. Dumas with a miss. Mark Few was saying, you know, in the summer, you finally give in sometimes on the schedule when teams are asking you. And then the season starts and you go, what in the world was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> it sounded good in the summer, didn't it? But again, their motto, anyone, anywhere, anytime. And they've come here to Indiana today and put on a pretty good show again, as have the Hoosiers. Deflected out of bounds by the 7'5", junior Will Foster. There's a good look at Mark Few. 
There's Will Foster. Not many teams have a kid 7'5". Look the at that wingspan. It's, it's from one <laughs> end of the three-second lane to the other right there, 7'5". Malik Story misses the three. That's Stephen Gray with a rebound, and this is going to end 70-54. to So another game effort for the Hoosiers, who will fall to 4-4. Four and four. Fifth rank, Gonzaga stays unbeaten at 6-0. That's it from Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. Gonzaga winning it 70-54. Coming up on the Big Ten Network, Northwestern and DePaul. This has been a presentation of the Big Ten Network for John Leskowski and our entire Big Ten Network crew. I'm Tom Hamilton saying so long, everybody. Now we take you to Evanston, Illinois.